What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, Karen mistakes me for my brother and flips out. So a little bit of background information. The other day, I was going to where my brother works, this somewhat high-end restaurant. He works as a waiter and we are only about two years apart and look somewhat similar but not super alike. Anyways, he had left his phone in my car before he started his shift, so I was bringing it to him. I was dressed up in a button-down and a green tie with a jacket and khakis, and the waitstaff wears black pants and white button-downs with black ties. So I was not dressed similarly to them at all. Okay, so on to the story. I was texting one of my brother's coworkers to try and figure out where my brother was as I was waiting in the lobby. I was sitting down on the bench because he was taking forever, which was expected because he was waiting on several tables at the time. Since I figured it would take a while, I decided to check Instagram. Then after about 5 minutes, this woman walks up to me and I kid you not, she is the definition of a Karen just based on her looks. I mean, she was the whole package, short spiky hair, the Goyard purse, the Michael Kors watch, the snakeskin shoes, and even the innocent kid and husband by her side. Anyways, this lady stands right above me, like four inches away from me, so I'm already uncomfortable. She's just standing there, staring at my phone as I scroll through my Instagram feed. I moved down the bench a little bit because I thought maybe I took her seat or something, I don't know. I'm not the most confrontational person in the world, so I didn't say anything right away. After I move over, she also moves over and continues to stare at my Instagram feed. At this point, I can't stand the awkwardness, so I put my phone down and look up at her and kindly ask her, can I help you with anything? She looks absolutely furious after I say this. She then proceeds to tell me in the most sarcastic and aggressive tone, um, yes, you could get back to work and get me my damn food? While she says this, she points her finger in my face, almost touching me. I then try to explain to her that I don't work there and how I was bringing my brother his phone and I was dressed up for a date that I had later that evening. She continues to tell me how I'm trying to sell her BS and she's not going to buy it and how I shouldn't take my break in the middle of waiting tables and how lazy and disgusting of a human being I am. Her exact words. At this point, she's not really yelling, but she's talking really, really loud. And this gets the attention of the host, and she steps in and tries to explain to the Karen that I don't work there, and now her husband is trying to calm her down, and her kid is just left alone at their table. My brother is still nowhere to be found, and my anxiety is shooting through the roof. So I'm getting chewed out by this Karen I've never even seen before and the poor host is doing her best to defuse the situation and Karen is just not having it. At this point, she starts straight up yelling and says something like, You shouldn't be defending this lazy bum just because he's your boy toy! To the host and believe it or not, she says those five famous words. I need a manager now! So, the host calls the manager over, but he was already on his way after hearing the yelling, and at this point, everyone is looking at us, and my brother has finally found his way over to me. The manager shows her my brother and reassures her that I don't work there, and tells her that she needs to either calm down immediately and go back to her table or leave the restaurant. She then says this is a waste of her time and that we were trying to trick her into thinking that I was her waiter and trying to make her mad. She then throws $30 in my face for the food they ordered and stormed out with her husband and kid following frantically behind her. Her husband stays back for a second and says he's so sorry about her behavior and explains that she didn't take her medicine the past three days and then gave my brother an extra $15 as a tip. I explained to my brother and his manager exactly what happened and why the Karen was flipping out and I finally gave my brother his phone. The manager thanks me for handling the situation responsibly and apologizes for me having to go through that. I tell him it's no big deal, but he still gives me a coupon for two free meals, so that was a bonus at least. This whole thing happened a couple of months ago and my brother still works there. He said he hasn't seen her there since. All right, good story and all, good story and all, but what I want to see is a Karen in a restaurant, a restaurant Karen, if you will. Um, I want to hear a Karen scream, I want to see the chef instead of the manager, because that would be, you know, thematically appropriate, you know what I mean? 
This story's called, No Karen, You Can't Stuff a Rabbit in a Hamster Cage. Just for context and why our Karen here might have thought I worked there. I was in the pet shop today. Despite being 20, my mom was shopping for our pet supplies while I was eyeing over the cute animals when I see a guinea pig that seems sick. The employee gets him out for a checkup and asks me to hold him while she goes get the in-house vet. I spend a lot of time in there and have gotten all my past pets there, so the employee knows I can safely hold a guinea pig. A lady with a young child comes to me. The kid seems to want to see the guinea pig, so I just crouch slightly so the kid can pet him. Karen, not her real name probably, says to just let him hold the guinea pig. I say, sorry, no, I'm just holding on to him for a minute. She rolls her eyes cartoonishly and drags the kid away. I think no more of it for a while. The queue is quite long to check out. Since it's a week now till Christmas, everyone wants to get their last minute pet gifts and treats. The vet comes and takes the guinea pig, who seems to have brightened up now, so thankfully he's probably okay. I'm now wandering aimlessly around, saying hello to the rats and hamsters, probably my favorite animals and ones I have had many pets of. So when Karen comes and asks me which type of hamster is friendliest, I answer her without thinking. The employees are all pretty busy, so I really don't mind talking about small furries when I can. We talk for a few minutes about whether hamsters are good pets for kids at all. I'm honest with her, I don't think they are. I suggest she looks at the easier to handle animals like rabbits and guinea pigs. Coincidentally, larger, calmer animals are often more expensive to care for as they eat more and need more space. Duh. Then Karen surprises me by demanding, Okay, then we'll take one of those, pointing to the rabbits. And a cage? She points to hamster cages. I pause for a second to process what she just asked. I just say I don't work here, I just love pets, but that cage is nowhere near big enough for a rabbit, and that rabbits like to live in pairs. She insists it would be fine for a rabbit that small. Karen, I don't know if you know this, but they grow up! I try to be polite, but the kinds of people who irresponsibly buy pets for kids and know nothing about the animal's care really annoy me a lot. The amount of rescue hamsters I've had, oh, I didn't know they were nocturnal, or but they fight when put in groups, is disgusting. And I worried a little that a poor rabbit was going to end up back at the shop in two weeks. I gesture towards the rack of animal care leaflets. It took me months to decide what pet I wanted. This place will be quieter after Christmas too, then the employees will have more time to answer you. She cuts me off, suddenly fuming. She goes on a rant about how I must be earning commission as I tried to sell her a more expensive animal and then tried to make her get two and an expensive cage. This pet shop has a policy of only selling social animals in pairs or more, so without proof of already having rabbits, she wouldn't be able to buy just a single one anyway. I've had trouble buying an extension hamster cage in the past, having to show photos of my cage setup and all before they let me get it. Apparently, some people mistake extension cages for full-sized ones. The employees here really do care about the animal's welfare. That's why I keep coming back. Look, do what you want. I don't work here at all. I only care that the animals are happy. Pet care isn't cheap. The kid this whole time has been trying to entertain himself by poking his fingers in the rat cage. Luckily, none of them bit him. Karen seems to be completely oblivious to what her kid is doing. I go back to just enjoying looking at the animals. I can sense Karen fuming like a pressure cooker as she stomps off to a poor employee who was cleaning cages. My mom comes back, now paid for the supplies, and we start to walk out of the shop as I can hear Karen whining to an employee about her conspiracies that I'm there to sell her more expensive animals in cages. <laughs> no animals were harmed in the making of this post. Guinea pig status is unknown, but I got a text saying they refused to sell the lady rabbits or hamsters. I feel kind of bad for the kid. Yeah, that is really an issue. People buying pets they don't know how to or aren't capable of taking care of. It's, it's frustrating, but what can you do? Well, actually, you can do a lot, but that would upset people. Because what if you had to get, like, a permit to get a dog? Nobody's gonna like that. No one likes the government making you get certified for anything. <laughs> this story's called, I Don't Work Here, Lady, and Neither Does the Mayor. This happened last Saturday. My husband and I had gone to a Christmas party and we were on our way home sometime between 1 and 2 in the morning. 
I had not gotten to the grocery store earlier because I only needed a couple of items and thought it could wait. Hubby asks if we have milk at home, one of the items we did need. But we were close to a locally owned 24-hour grocery store that I never go to, so we stopped there. Like I said, we had been at a party. Husband was my designated driver and I was a little bit tipsy. Not drunk, but shouldn't be driving either. If I let hubby go in, he will buy 10 unnecessary items and forget one of the items I need, so I said I would go in. As I was getting out, hubby asked me to get him some pastries from the bakery area. I roll my eyes, but agree. I go in the unfamiliar store and try to get my bearings. Basic grocery store layout. Milk at the back of the store, the bakery area is to the immediate left. I see an employee who is stocking and or cleaning around the register area. We nod to each other as I decide I don't need a cart or basket for my three items. I head to the back of the store thinking I'll grab the milk first and then my other item and swing by the bakery area last as it was close to the front. Every aisle has boxes stacked around it as they restock everything late at night when they have few customers. It is a bit of a maze, but you can get a cart down every aisle. I get to the dairy section and I am looking for the milk I want because everything is arranged slightly different than at my regular store. That is when I hear someone who is halfway yelling from a good distance away from me. I didn't know this woman and I couldn't understand what she was yelling about so I pay no attention as I am a little tipsy and getting tired. Now, I have been to a party. I'm wearing a dark green velvet dress covered with gold sparkly flex, over the knee black boots with a small gold crossbody purse and wearing a Santa hat. I do not look like I am an employee currently working at the store. This woman comes up to me pushing a cart that appears to have enough food and sundries to survive the apocalypse. She is at least as old as my mother and clearly able-bodied but probably not completely right in the head, or maybe she herself had been drinking. I don't know. Strange lady says, Finally, I was starting to think I was alone in this store. I realized I had not seen an employee since the one I encountered upon entering. So I replied, The employees may be in the back getting items to restock or possibly taking a break. I don't know. Well, you can help me now. I need some sort of sugar substitute. Help me find it the strange woman demands. I am still not realizing that she thinks I'm an employee here. So I simply say, it's probably on the same aisle as the baking supplies near the regular sugar. I reach for the cooler door to retrieve my milk choice. As I'm opening the door, she puts her hand on the glass door and holds it shut. At this point, I am tired, tipsy, and triggered for the sake of alliteration, and I raised my voice and used language I normally don't use. What the hell is your problem? This prompted the strange woman to start yelling. You can't speak to me that way. Do you know who I am? I know the mayor. I yelled back at her. Well, I know the mayor too, and the governor, and I went to school with the attorney general. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Tipsy me tends to ramble sometimes. At this point, the manager on duty appeared out of a door by the dairy section with a scared employee trailing behind him. Ladies, is there a problem here? The strange woman started demanding that I be fired because I had cussed her out and threatened her. I admitted to the use of profanity but said I had not made any threats, and I didn't know she had mistaken me for an employee. The woman began saying I was lying and not only threatened her but now she claims I tried to steal her purse which is buried under a bunch of grocery items in her cart, and she demanded that I be fired. The manager informed her that I was not an employee, but I was another customer. And he didn't believe her because he was in the office and saw our interactions on the cameras before he came out. She got huffy with him and once again said, Do you know who I am? I know the mayor. I replied, Again with the mayor? What does Charles have to do with any of this? Who is Charles? She asked confused. The mayor, I replied. I volunteered on his campaign. <laughs> the manager tried to hold back a chuckle. He attempted to calm the situation and asked us both to go on about our shopping. He offered to have the employee help the woman and he would assist me. The woman and employee left in search of her sugar substitute, I suppose, and the manager asked if I needed any assistance. I said no, I just wanted to get my items and leave. He said he would meet me up front and check me out personally. I got my items, including the pastries my husband asked for, and made my way to checkout. 
The manager gave me a 25% discount on my purchase and a gift card for $25 for future purchases. I told him it wasn't necessary, but he insisted. He also told me that he knew Charles, the mayor, and thought he was a great guy. I smiled and thanked him. On my way out of the store, I passed the register where the woman was now checking out. As I passed by, I said, I'll tell the mayor you said hello. The woman turned red and looked away. Nothing crazy, but I had quite a story to share with my husband on the way home. Did you tell the mayor too? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really funny because <laughs> the dude <laughs> said the mayor was a good guy and she's like, thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, that makes me think of back in the day when I was in high school, okay? And um, I was, you know, I was known for being my dad's son because my dad made really good pizzas at the only gas station in town, so everyone knew him and liked him and all that stuff, so I was cool by association. Anywho, <laughs> my f this guy, well, he wasn't my friend, but he came up to me and he was like, dude, your dad makes amazing pizza, and I was like, thank you, and then they started laughing at me because they're like, you're saying thank you as if I complimented you, I was complimenting your dad, but I was like, I don't know what to say to that, but it's just funny, because <laughs> she just, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> why? <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.